Good news YouTube and welcome to the blue corner in this video I have for you guys a deck profile for Carter Vanguard and it is going to be on Genesis featuring Regalia CEO Cosmic Regalia Oh god I cannot talk this is Cosmic Regalia CEO Yggdrasil and this is the deck that I've been playing for the better part of the last month and the clan I've been playing for the better part of this year uh, ever since set 14 came out Genesis has been pretty much my go-to clan for Vanguard and and as a result, I've come to learn a couple things about it that was both pleasant and unpleasant, but we'll get into that in a little bit. As it is, though, this is a deck profile on CEO Egracel featuring Minerva and Angelica, as I don't care for Nyx. Like, I tried it, it just... I think the card isn't as amazing as some people make it out to be. A pseudo plus one is great and all, but otherwise it's just a vanilla Legion, whereas at least with Minerva and Angelica, they can do some other things. Well, Minerva more so, Angelica not so much, but we'll get to those when I get to them. So, first up, the main card of the deck is Cosmic Regalia Seal Ygrasil, the Legion with Regalia of Fate Norn, one of these being Legion Rear, of course, because you gotta at least have your bo one of your boss monsters in nice foil. I wish I could say that for some of my other decks, but yeah, we'll cross those bridges when we get there. So, Regalia... Cosmic Regalia CEO Regracel has a really powerful ability that we will zoom in on so you can guys see it. And that is when this unit is attacks a Vanguard and she is in Legion, you can Soul Blast 6 to have her gain a critical and your opponent can't call grade 1 or higher units from their hand to the Guardian Circle. Meaning your opponent can't Quintet Wall or Perfect Guard this thing and it's a plus 1 critical. So she has a rather degenerate combination of Glory, Maelstrom, and just about any Daiusha unit really. Split Dimension Police kind of do is just power up the Vanguard with extra crits, swing, and hope for the best. Regracel, I'm not going to lie, is kind of the same boat. Actually, the clan in general is kind of Vanguard centric with its rear guards as an afterthought. You grace a little bit more than the other ones, but she is, though, very good. Her ability can just outright steal games, especially if your opponent is at 3 to 4 damage. 4 damage especially, like that's the, that is a spot you never want to be at when you're playing against this deck is hoping that you have enough cards in hand to withstand a 30,000 or higher attack because that's what your grace will usually be swinging for on average. 28 if she's got a 5k booster behind her, 30 if she has a 7k because when she attacks and there's a unit in the same column as this card, i.e. a booster or your legion mate, she gains an additional 3. So 23 by herself, 28 with a 5, 30 with a 7. And potentially more depending on how else you power up. So this is the main boss card. You you want to get to this first. Get your opponent to high damage. And then after that, what I want to do is I want to finish my opponent off with Minerva. As even though she is a limit break, making her very slow, a restanding vanguard is still a restanding vanguard. Restanding is the most powerful skill in the game. And Minerva is really good at it. Counter Blast 1, Discard 3, Soul Blast 3. The Soul Blast is a lot easier to pull off now because of some new cards released in this set. So I do feel the Minerva serves as a very powerful late game finisher, cleanup attacker. She's terrible in the early game. I will not deny that. She's a, if you ride her before you grace her, it's not good at all. But I do feel that her pros far away her cons. Just four drive checks a turn is still really good. If your opponent perfect guards both attacks, fine. You're probably if this is late game, you, after you legioned back your triggers into the deck, then you could be stacking up to four triggers on some rear guard column that's going to be swinging over big amounts of damage anyway. And then rounding out the grade threes are two copies of Regalia of Wisdom Angelica. The ratios of this card I keep twenty around with, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's one, and then Minerva will be three, two, one as well. Uh, the idea behind Angelica is, number one, a break ride of Grace over this is really sick as that's an extra 10,000 power making her 30,000 minimum higher and it just eats away more cards from your opponents guarding because the only way they can guard this is with 10k's and 5k shields and in addition to that she also lets the deck draw which Genesis is rather lacking in like it doesn't have ways to it doesn't have a draw engine outside of Angelica and a couple niche cards It doesn't have ways to generate instant advantage like the paladins or the dragon clans and Angelica is one of your few ways to dig deeper into your deck so you can actually get to Egracel or Minerva and start doing your things 
And the random soul charging she gives you is kind of nice too. An attack or two will put you at a couple cards in soul, which is always helpful. And that's it for the grade three lineup. This is probably going to change if anything when the eventual Genesis Stride support comes out. That way I can just run four E Grey Soul and then just run four whatever of the uh, Stride Fodder will be that makes it so that when you stride you can Soul Blast this to do this or Generation Break stuff. So let's get on to the Grade 2 lineup because this is where Regalia has really changed. So the Grade 2 lineup now consists of four copies of Regalia Fate Norn. When you Soul Blast this thing off your Vanguard gains 5k. This stacks and Thanks to Hemera and Shiny Angel, you can make it so that you can Soul Blast this off, put it back into the Soul, Soul Blast it again, and then have you Grey Soul or Minerva swing for 5 or 10 extra thousand power. If you ride this turn 2, ride Angelica, and then break ride with Angelica, that's plus 5, and then plus 10 thousand power, draw 2, so your Vanguard gets plus 15. This card's amazing. Even if you're not running a Grey Soul, I would still run this in your, your Regalia deck. It's, it's just straight up power. And then four copies of Midday Regalia, Hemera. When you call this thing to rear guard, you can take up the three Regalia in your drop zone and move them to the soul. This is what allows you to basically eliminate random soul charging that uh, was a bit of an issue with the old Minerva deck. Instead of charging off the top of the deck, now you charge from your drop zone and you can choose what you charge, i.e. this thing. Or if you're sitting on Minerva and you didn't get a chance to put Angelica in, but you ended up quintet walling it into the graveyard, then you can just take this guy, or rather this girl, in your drop zone and put it into your soul, and now your Minerva's cross-ridden. Very good support card. Also run four of them in a Regalia deck. It's a shame that she is Regalia only. If she was just Genesis, that would be amazing for the Witch deck. And then writing out three copies of Goddess of Trees, Jupiter. <coughs> I am running this over the other great two options, Hesperus and Freya, because, number one, I don't own Hesperus, so I can't even comment on what I think about it. And then Freya, while she does <coughs> let, let you Soul Charge for you and you Legion, while also becoming a 5k, a 15, 16k attacker by herself, it's only for the turn that you Legion, and I'm only running 4 Legions, so she's not really be doing a whole lot for me in this deck. If I was running straight up your Graceful Nyx, then yes, I would probably run more of her, but instead of that, I am running Jupiter for the ability of being a 12k attacker in a deck that is kind of lacking in good grade twos like don't get me wrong all these things are amazing but they're still 9k vanilla attackers once they've done their thing like once this thing is called it's just a 9k attacker whereas this is a 12k so it can by itself attack a vanguard which will either make your opponent take a damage or they lose a card from their hand trying to block this attack which I feel is important for your Grey game plan of getting your opponent to 3 damage, and then 3 or 4 damage, correct, my apologies, and then going for the kill. Sometimes, yeah, you have to try and do it at 3 damage. 4 is ideal, but if you're playing against things that will go off of 4 damage, i.e. Bad End Dragger or Mordred Phantom, because your opponent's playing Revengers or Spike Brothers, then you kind of have to try and go for the push at 3 damage. And this guy just, or rather this girl, helps you get there. Then for the grade runs, we'll start with my Sentinels. I'm running a 2-2 split of the Perfect Guard and Quintet Wall. New Quintet Wall, by the way. I Yeah. There's really no difference. Is that this thing can be used as drop zone fodder for Himera and Shiny Angel, but I tried going three Quintet Walls, and while that is great and all, we're now in a format where there's a lot of things that attacking for big numbers, and, some, and Quintet Walls, on average, will let you guard for about... 15 to 25 shield, but that's not always the case. Whereas a perfect guard is a guaranteed stop, especially against Phantom Blaster Abyss that's been break ridden or just the multiple attacks of Thing Saver Dragon. Then we get to four copies of Shiny Angel. This thing, when you call to rear guard, is just like a mirror take three regalia from your drop zone and put them into your soul. Very good card, and this is MK Booster. Three copies of John Goddess of Union Juno, same reasoning as the Jupiter, it's a beat stick that I can use in a lot of points of the game. This one even more so because when your opponent's sitting at a 7k grade 1, which is a lot of the time, it will force out a card from their hand. When they're sitting on their 9k grade 2, it'll also force out a card from their hand because you're swinging for 10,000. And then after that, it's a 7k booster. So it's just a very good card that allows you to me do a little bit of rushing in a deck that can't really rush. 
Two copies of Radiant Owl. Owl is good. Owl is love. Owl is life. Praise Owl. And then finally, one copy of Purification Regalia, Pure Angel. When you call this in your rear guard, you kind of last one and give your Vanguard 5,000 power. And then the ability of if it hits, you can Soul Blast, but you're not going to do that. You Soul Blast to draw a card, but there's no point. All you're really doing is you're calling it to give your Vanguard 5,000 power. That's it. Like it, like I said before, this deck is kind of getting Dimension Police level where you're just powering up your Vanguard, swinging and hoping for the best. And to add to that are four copies of Battle Mage and Kukuhime, put into the soul, give your unit 5,000, 3,000 power, my correction. Four of the Regalia crit trigger, and then four of the Regalia draw trigger. I'm not going YOLO 12 crits because I don't think that works in here. I'm running the draw trigger because number one, his ability is amazing. When you call, when you guard with this thing, you soul charge one, and it works off of quintet walls. And then number two, again, you need draw power to get to your big pieces, and this guy helps you do that. Helps you build up a hand so that you can guard against attacks, and so that you can get to your things and let you take cards from the drop zone and put them into the soul, and get to your grade threes, which is helpful. And then four copies of the heal trigger. And then we'll round this out with the starter as well. This is Regalia of Prayers, Prayer Angel. When your Vanguard is in Legion, you can move this into the Soul. Soul Charge 3 and have your Vanguard gain 5k. It's an okay ability. On paper, it's a minus, but I still feel this is the better of the starters available because when you ride from 1 to 2 to 3, you're going to be at 2 cards in Soul. When you use this girl's ability, your vanguard will get the necessary four cards needed to be at six, so that Graceful will be able to use her ability at, at least on the turn you legion. You may not, it depends on the situation, you'll have to take that into consideration, but I still feel it's a necessary evil as far as starters go. I mean, yeah, Amena Hakari can also be used, but I don't see you getting as much soul... Um, I don't see you being able to build up the four cards in soul needed until much later in the game. Now, if you're running a more Minerva heavy line, then yeah, I would run Hamana Hakari. Vivid Rabbit is also an option. It's a just put it into the soul, look at the top five cards you read for grade three. And I might even consider doing that just because I have been great stuck even now, and G Assist will still not be legal in tournament play for another month or two. Yeah. So, that's just my reasoning behind this guy. And then, yeah, um,. For the hell of it, why not? Uh, three harmonics inside for my G zone, even though I can't use it. But anyway, that is the deck featuring Egracel, Minerva, Angelica, and finally Norn. Fun deck, still very good. I would say it's definitely in one of the top five decks of the format. Not the best, and definitely not second best anymore now that Gold Paladins and Royal Paladins are into the format, and like, I can't imagine how this deck matches up against Thingsaver Dragon. And I think it would come down to just who's able to make their big push first. Thingsaver can basically attack a 22,000 three times, which this deck will not have enough adequate guard for, so it's basically kill them before they can kill you. And as far as Gold Paladins go, they pretty much play the same way. Prominence Claire is Egracel, except you can't power it up as easy, but you can make a giant blarg board, and, well, rush decks are kind of a problem for this. But, um, as far as what I hope will happen in the future for this clan in general, I hope that Genesis will get more rare guards that make it so that they can generate advantage. Like, for God's sakes, give us a Rising Phoenix. Something lets you just Soul Blast to draw a card, or Soul Blast to do this and that, like... Genesis has some very good vanguards, but for God's sakes, how about getting us some really good rear guards that just make it so you don't have to rely on your vanguard to win? That's what I'd like with here, and I'm sure I'm not alone with this. That being said, though, that's it for the deck profile. Uh, stay tuned for more stuff this week, as I will be uploading at least one more vanguard video, and I'm going to upload an actual Yu-Gi-Oh! video for the people who are waiting on that. So, until then... This is Blue Starry 99 jacking out.